Probably some of the most familiar scripture that we've heard or our lesson has been on in a while, but it's a very familiar scripture, but uh, I got a couple thoughts I want to share with you this morning, and uh, as Richard said so many times, you know, uh, not because I'm standing here trying to teach this morning, but the Word of God is very important. Yes, the Bible said we are begotten by the Word. <coughs> we have to have the Word. Yep, yep. The Word of God now, it can come in many forms. But the Word of God is how we are saved. The children just sung the song, Jesus loves me, this I know. How do I know? How do I know God loves me? For the Bible. Yeah. The Bible tells me so. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, the more you know, yeah. and the more you read, and the more you study, and the more word that you put in yourself, the stronger and the closer walk you'll have with God. Uh -huh. Richard mentioned Stephen. I'll throw this in for This wasn't part of my lesson, but I'll throw this in. The Bible records that they told him to go seek you out Seven men full of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. And Stephen was one of those men. And what did Stephen do? The very first thing. Listen. Stephen was full of the word. He sure was. Stephen started in Genesis and he quoted them and took them all the way to where they were standing that day. And showed them the way of Christ. And of course they've stoned him. But Stephen was full of the word. You want to be full of the spirit? You've got to be full of the word. John said in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So. The word of God. Is essential. To our walk with Christ. The word of God is essential. To be saved. The word of God is how we are saved. How we. Live our Christian life. How we sustain our Christian life. It's all by the word of God. We got to have it. Sure. So. Paul goes in. And he starts out in verse 11, and we'll come, I'm going to come back to verse 11 later on, but verse 11 said, For the Scripture saith, and what we find here in Paul, Paul is speaking to this group, and he's quoting so much Scripture. He's quoting Deuteronomy, he's quoting four or five places in Isaiah, he's quoting Jeremiah, He's giving them the word. He's quoting the word of God to them. And he started that. He said, the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. He said, for there's no difference between the Jew or the Greek. For the same Lord is over all, is rich unto them that call upon him. There's not no different God. People can make false gods, but there is only one true living God. The Jehovah God. The God I am. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is the only God. He's the only God there is. You know, nobody has a different God. He's the God of all creation. He's the God of all mankind. No matter your nationality, no matter your skin color, no matter <coughs> where you are, if you're a human being, God is your creator. And there's only one God. And he said he is rich to all those that call upon him. Rich how? He is rich with mercy and with grace. He wants the whole world. Come on, Ryan. He wants every single person, man, boy, girl, he wants to save their soul. He's rich, Janet. He's rich in mercy, rich in grace. 
It is unlimited supply. Whosoever will, everyone come. God has got enough for all. For he said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say this morning, is it that simple, Ronnie? It's that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord Think of that. shall be saved. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. <laughs> That's good odds, ain't it? You only have to believe. So Paul goes on and he asks a series of questions. He said, whoever would call on the name of the Lord, they're going to be saved. They will be saved. They shall be saved. Mm -hmm. So Paul goes with a series of questions. He said, how shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How are you going to call on somebody if you don't believe? How are you going to call on Jesus Christ to be your Savior if you don't believe that he died on the cross of Calvary, that he shed his life blood for you and I, that he rose the third day, that he ascended to heaven, and he's making intercessions? How are you going to pause and how can you call if you don't believe? There's many of folks, Bobby, that call on God but they're not calling for salvation. Have you heard? Oh my God! Oh God! Yeah. Hey, you, Paul said, why are you calling on him if you don't believe in him? Yeah. And he goes on and he said, how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Paul said, how are you going to call on somebody you ain't believe in? Mm -hmm. How are you going to believe in somebody you've never heard of? Mm -hmm. How are you going to hear unless somebody preach to you or teach to you? That's why this part of this service, that's why when Richard Harold or whoever stands behind this podium, it's the most important part of the service. I love to sing. I really do. Yeah, it makes me joy in my heart. It makes me have a good feeling. Yeah. It makes me feel good, Richard. Come on, Ron. But we have to have the Word. Amen. The Word has to go out. The Bible records that there is coming a day that there will be a famine. And it's not going to be for bread or water or food, Kathy. God said there's going to come a famine for the world. Come on, come on. People are going to be hungry for it, Richard. Come on. They're going to be starving for the world, and they ain't going to get it. I've watched these services, not a whole lot of them. When I go back and watch them, back in the, pan, the peak of the pandemic, they'd be 120, 130, 140. And, we, and no offense to you, Richard, Come on. or if I was speaking, or Zach, who were talking, I or Toby, or Andy, I or Zach, or whoever, they go up here and open this Bible, you watch it drop. Come on. Let's do something else. Yeah. Time to eat. you got to have the word, folks. Yes, sir. We're forgotten by the word. It's how we live, Toby. What's going to sustain us? So then he quotes, he said, How shall they preach unless they be sent? you got to be called. This man right here was called of God to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's anointed. He's a Holy Spirit has anointed him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if he just goes on his own, it's not going to be no benefit. No, sir. If I come up here and open this book and try to tell you what Ronnie Vance thinks, 
If I come up here and open this book and try to say, well, this is what I think, this is what I believe, this is uh, what I say, it ain't going to mean a thing. It's not what I say, it's not what he says, it's not what he says or he says or he says. It's what saith the Lord God. If it's anointed, we can't deny it. The blood, there's lots of folks nowadays says this Bible needs to be rewrote. <laughs> I'm going to tell you it needs to be rewritten. <laughs> there's not going to be no more. This is the Word of God. This is God's Word. God has spoken it. He told John on the Al Patmos, he said, seal up the book, yep. close it up. There's no more. Come on. Nothing be more recorded. I don't care who comes along and says, God says this, that, whatever. If it ain't in here, if you can't back it up with this right here, come on, Ronnie. If you if you can't find it, this right here, then it's not God's word. He said, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet to then the priestly gospel. And that's where we don't read it. No. I've heard a lot of people quote, how beautiful is the feet in the priestly gospel. But it says more than that. It says, how beautiful are the feet of them. And he's quoting Isaiah 52, 7. Yeah. How beautiful are them that preach the gospel of peace. Yeah, what gospel? The gospel of peace yeah. and bring glad tidings of good things. The gospel of peace. We read it every morning. Come on, come on. Every Christmas we read it. We have plays we read it. <laughs> we read it all of our lives. Part of our lives. About when Jesus was born and the angels Appeared to the shepherds, taking an abide in the field. Said, fear not. We bring you good tidings of great joy. Well, unto you this day is born in the city of David. A Savior. And it went on, not quoting it word for word, it went on and said, the heavenly host. They was a great multitude of heavenly host. What was they saying, Zach? Peace. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. Yeah. Good will towards men. The gospel of peace. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. But only to Peace. What peace? Well, first of all, you are alienated from God. Your sins have got you separated from an almighty God. You're an enemy with God. When God, the word of God, pricks your heart and you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, first peace is peace with God. You and God have peace. God forgives you of all your sins. God said he takes them and casts them as far as the east and to the west, never to be remembered again. Amen. So then now, you and God are at peace. Amen. Second peace is now <laughs> you can be peace with yourself. Hey, I've lived it, folks. I was in torment. I didn't even like myself at one time. Yeah. That's the truth. But the peace, you and God has peace. Then there's peace inside you. That Holy Spirit, that Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. That's the peace of God that comes in your life. That gives you an inner peace. And there's one more. 
When you got peace with God, when you peace with yourself, I have peace with you, 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 you. That's right. I won't pick on Andy Purdue. Come on. I won't try to pick Richard Harold apart. I won't try to pick on Bobby. I won't look for your faults. I won't poke at you, Andy. I got peace. God said, Jesus Christ said, I would that you love each other as I have loved you. We are here today. We are here today standing behind a holy ground. God don't want to hear what God don't want me to say what Ronnie Vance thinks. God don't want me to tell you my thoughts and feelings. <laughs> he said a workman be not ashamed. Right in the Bible, word of God. Come on, Ronnie. Be a workman shouldn't be to ashamed to rightly divide the word of God. Amen. But to study and show himself approved. Come on. I'm not here to give you my interpretation. No, sir. I'm not here to give, give you what I think. Rightly divided means giving you the right interpretation of the word of God. That's why I told me we have to study. That's why, Andy, we seek God. That's why, Zach, that we have to ask the Holy Spirit that guide us. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus no, Christ. So he said we're to preach the gospel of peace and glad tidings of good things. Come on. The world hears nothing but trouble and pride. There is no good news going to come from the world. No. How precious is the feet of the man that brings you good news yeah. of the peace of Jesus Christ. Come on. You know, <laughs> give people bad news. Uh -huh. I've had to give it to them. Sure, sure. Sorry I've you. had to carry that bad news. Come on. And it was just dragging my feet because I hated to tell people to what to I was going to have to tell. And the world is full of people that's going to give you bad news. Uh -huh. How precious is the thing <laughs> if I can walk up right. here and tell you But we have find that not all obey the gospel. Sadly, people reject it. Only thing Richard can do 
or Toby or Andy or Zach or whoever. Only thing they can do is give it to you. Present it to you. They can't cram it down your throat. It ain't going to do no good. They can't force feed it. It'll do no good. All we can do is give it. Deliver it. It's your free moral agent. Take it or leave it. We hope and pray that you take it. God is sending it out. God is wanting to save your soul. God is, loves you. But Paul said we know not all obeyed it. He said we know that all obeyed it. The gospel for Isaiah, which is Isaiah, saith, Lord, who has believed our report? Isaiah 51 1. Isaiah went on and talked about to Jesus, how he was wounded for our transgressions, how the chastisement of our peace was bruised for our iniquity. He was bruised for our iniquity. Who believed this report? It's true. Jesus done it all for you and I. Isaiah said, who's going to believe it? How can you call upon someone that you don't believe? Who's going to believe this report? How can you call on somebody that you don't believe? So then faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You got to hear the word. When you hear this word of God, you grow in this word of God, your faith will increase. I heard uh, somebody say the other day when I was studying this, said that the Reverend Moody, he said he prayed for years and years. God in, increased my faith. He said he waited for years and years for a lightning bolt to come out of the sky, hit him, give him all this great faith. He said then one day he said he opened his Bible and he started reading it every day. Oh, he said, and I started reading that Bible every day, and that word started getting inside me. He said, man, my faith has gotten stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Faith coming by here. Hearing what? By the word of God. He said, but I say unto you, have, not, have they not heard? Are you going to use the excuse this morning, have you not heard? Oh, he said, yes, barely the sand went into all the earth. He's quoting from David's Psalm 19 4. He said, it's done went out. It's went out all over the earth. Barely I say the sound has went into the, all the earth and the words to the end of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saying, I will provoke you to jealousy, to whom that there are no people. And a foolish nation, I will anger you. Now he's talking to the Jewish folks in that crowd. When right before Moses died, some of the last words Moses spoke, he said, listen, he was talking about, he said, oh, you dog, Israel, you just provoked me and provoked me and did all these things. He said, God said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. One of these days, these Gentiles, these people that you say are not a nation, these people are not in that. He said, the word is going to go out. And that's what happened. When Jesus was crucified and they started per persecuting the church and started trying to stomp out this Christianity, all these people fled. And they went out all over the countryside. They went everywhere, Richard. And when they got out there, they started preaching this gospel of peace. And the Gentile people re was receptive to it. And they started getting saved. And they started getting, more and more of them getting saved. Mm -hmm. And now the Jewish folks, God said, hey, I'm going to provoke you to jealousy. I'm going to take these people that you call dogs. I'm going to take these people that you say are not a people. He says, you've known first. I've washed over, I've blessed you, I've took care of you all your life. And you rejected it. Uh -huh. He said, but a size, he said, Moses said that. He said, but Isaiah, he's even bolder. He was very bold. He said, I found them 
I found them that sought me not, and I made, and I was manifested in them that asked for me not. Bobby testified this morning. I wasn't even looking for God. I wasn't even thinking about him, Bobby. It's your testimony this morning. That was my testimony. God came looking for me. Yeah. God came when I was at my work. When I thought that I would withdraw myself, Janet, as far as I could away from the Lord. He was right there. In my heart, want to save myself. Say, it's the word of God that goes forth. I've thought so many times I was just a young teenage boy, and I was I was pretty honest. I'll tell you, I was a young teenage boy. I hated, I hated to walk through that door right there. Come on, me too. I was with you. I, I did everything I could do to get out of coming to this church house. My mom, I'd act like I was sick. Oh, I'm sick of my stomach. I'm this and that. My mommy said, I tell you what, you're going to go if you got to go in the ambulance. <laughs> but let me tell you something. He paid a bit of attention. I sat back there, hooked up my head. Well, old devil told Sister Jackie he paid attention. I sat back there in them pews, hooked up my head, didn't want to be here. Hey. Y'all listen to this. Praise the Lord. Hey, the preachers come through this door. Ah, oh, Lord, he's going to preach for now. <laughs> He'd preach, and at that moment, I go home at night, I... I couldn't tell you what he preached about. If you'd ask me what he what did preach about, well, I might have said a word or two. I couldn't have told you. Hey, <laughs> listen. Whoa, I got a little older. Can I get out and get to running around? Get oh, that word would oh, come. Oh, listen. <laughs> that word would come back in my ear. Oh, and God would put it back in my ear and I'd go, oh, Lord, I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Because the word will go forth and accomplish that. Yeah, it'll accomplish that which, it, that which it sent forth to do. I got, I'm, I'm, one more thing. I'm going to be, I'm trying to be quick. Let's go back to verse Let's go back to verse 11, very first verse. He said, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, Paul was partially quoting from the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, he partially quoted. Isaiah, you can write it down, Isaiah 28 and 16. And here's what Isaiah wrote in 28th chapter, the 16th verse. He said, Therefore saith the Lord God. Isaiah said, Now this is what God is saying. He said, I lay a foundation, I lay for a foundation a stone. A tried stone, a precious stone, a cornerstone, yeah. a sure foundation. Come on, Riley. He that believeth shall not make haste. Now the word haste in the Hebrew tongue means to flee. Or run away from. God said, I lay a stone for I laid for a foundation, a stone, Toby. I laid this stone in Zion, in Jerusalem. He said, It's a tried stone. Oh, it's done been tried. It's done been proven. It's before the foundations of the earth, this stone. I laid it at Zion. For a foundation for you to build on. It's a tried stone. It's done been tried. It's done prove itself. 
He said, Hallelujah. It, it, I proved it, Ronnie. I proved it. It's a precious Bless stone. The Lord. Yeah. It's the most precious stone the all. I found it. Hey, let me tell you something. John Revelator, he's seen a lot of things in the book. Oh, he's seen gates of pearl. He's seen walls of jasper. He's seen streets of gold. He's seen every stone, every precious stone that we consider. That's the all. He's seen onyxes. He's seen emeralds. He's seen it all. Oh, but he's seen something else. <laughs> Hey, he said there wasn't no need of no sun. There wasn't no need of no moon. Oh, you didn't need a candlestick because this precious stone, huh, it was the light of that city. It outshined every other stone. It's the most precious stone that ever was. It's the most precious thing in heaven, Andy. He said it's a tried stone, it's a precious stone. He said it's a sure foundation. Come on, come on. I'm asking you this morning, what are you building on this morning? You've run. Hey, listen. Let's just, let's just cut it. Cut the chase. Yeah. We need to cut the chase. You've heard the gospel preached to you. You've watched this online. You've sat in this church. You've watched online for a year. The gospel of Jesus Christ, you've heard the word. God, <laughs> David says, don't get out. What are you trying to build on this morning? God said, hey, I laid the foundation. Yeah. People that's not ashamed of it won't run from it. No, are you ashamed of it this morning? Are you trying to run from the gospel? Are you running away? Gee, God said, Isaiah said, hey, people that <laughs> won't make haste. What are you building on this morning? What are you building your life on this morning? He said, Christ, the solid rock, of all other ground is sinking. Other ground is sinking safe. We sang that song, All My Hope is in Jesus. It is this morning. I felt that stone, that precious stone, that sure stone, You're that stone that's been tried, that stone that's proved itself. And I'm not ashamed of it this morning. Quit running from the gospel. How can you believe? How can you call on somebody unless you believe? God said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, what did the Bible, the word of God say? Shall be saved. Quit running and start building on the solid foundation. Bless you, my brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.